Okay, today we're going to spend some more time working on French infantry for Napoleonics. We're going to put a, I don't know, a couple drops worth of Vallejo khaki. <clears throat> and we're going to water this down a little bit because we want it to flow nice. And I'm going to show you that. It's going to be one of the main things we work on showing you guys today is the consistency of your paint is really important. You don't want it too thick and you don't want it too thin. Uh, I'd say a little thicker than milk, that's for sure. I just use an old piece of a paintbrush. I'm going to go in with my regiment, Army Painter Regiment. I'm going to show you a couple of them quick examples of what I've already been doing and that is uh, what we call our primary colors. So pants, uh, great coat, um, come back in and do the black which would be the hats, the boots, um, the uh, ammo pouch, um, oh yeah your ammo pouch that was his canteen so we'll do his ammo pouch black, hat black, boots black, there's some boots strapped under this guy's pack so we'll paint those black as an example and those are really going to be your three primary colors that you're going to use. Then we'll come back and do the finer detailing with like a brown, a light brown, or even like a leather brown for the backpack and this is why I did the white primer coat or base coat you can call it uh, so that you can leave these straps so that they can be touched up with a little uh, flat white there at the very end after we've done all the wash and then it's going to be the stock of the gun, the barrel of the gun with the bayonet flesh on last and then it'll be ready for a wash uh, a Vallejo brown wash and then going back and doing some highlights and uh, it'll be ready for basing so this one's got two base coats now we've got a raw figure here and uh, I'm going to work with my camera set up here so that I can show you guys how I do it. I'm going to go in and back a little bit here and that might be a little too thin. I might have to add another drop of paint on there. So I'm working with a new camera boom for this shot. It's really hard to get a camera angle exactly how I paint. I'm going to work with the angles here. I don't want to get too much paint on your brush. And you see how good it flows. It's just a little too thin, not too bad. I'm going to go with it. And then, um, obviously, what we can do is add a drop of paint if you think it is a little too thin. That was about two drops of paint and two drops of water. You might be just going to like a, a couple of little small drops of water. So come in and show you a few of these, what I'm doing to get that paint to flow. And you see how nice this regiment brush works. So, like I say, once you do five or six in a particular color, you see how I'm getting up into that cranny and then I'm pulling down, pulling down. Go up on this jacket, go in, and um, really get up, and see I'm not getting it on anything else, I'm focusing on just doing the coat, just the coat, and um, I come in, I'm not going to do as insignia on the side. You can get that, since this is nice and wet, I can really get that down in there. 
And the more you do this, the better you get at it. So, looks like I'm getting a good shot here. Now see, again, there's that strap I want to kind of maintain that whiteness, so I'm going to go right in there, and you see how that paint just kind of slides right in there. I'm going to turn my brush a little bit to where it's more of a finer point, and just do a tiny little touch. I'm going to come in and hit his neckline. Now if you do get a little bit onto that white strap, it's not a big deal. You can just come in at the final phase, which would be the touch-up phase, and just hit that with just a little bit of um, flat white with the detail brush. And I've said in other videos, and I've pointed out the new uh, three-pack that Army Painter is coming out with, where you can get the detail, the regiment, and the dry brush all in one kit for 15 bucks on Amazon. So, working really good. So, can get in there. Because I don't paint with any glasses on or anything. I just get the miniature up close to my naked eye. And, um, and that's really how I like to paint. So there's one. I'll do a couple more here for you. Now this guy's got more of a... His coat isn't open. It's closed. So this is going to go a little quicker. And get up. See, I'm getting up. I'm pushing my brush up into that little nook. And then drawing it down. See? And because the paint isn't too thick, it flows really nice, and you can get it up into that little crevice like that. See? And up and under the pack. Up and under the pack. See, I just missed all of that. And I'm telling you, one of the little tricks. I've picked up in the last month is using these caps. You can see how it's really given me control. I can turn it and twist it and I can brace my you see I'm bracing my finger for this tight stuff and it gives me a lot of control with the brush. It makes it go so much quicker and so much smoother when you have less touch-ups to do at the end. I still have enough paint on the brush. I'm going to go right on in and do this back section. And the other trick is, you know, don't get too much paint on your brush. That just comes with experience. You're just going to have to get in there and work with it and get your own. Everyone's got to develop <coughs> pretty much their own technique. So this is a primary color. I'm probably going to go in for the pants with these guys with the khaki coats because again, this these um, this is a Waterloo unit that sorry guys bumped the boom and um, it was kind of a hodgepodge unit. You know, they kind of they'd already been at a battle earlier with the Prussians and they were kind of just throwing together ad hoc units since Napoleon had just come back to power. So these great coat, this great coat kit, um, that's kind of what you're going after. Now if you see some areas that are kind of lighter, I'll just take some of the spare paint that I have left on my brush, maybe go over it maybe a second time, but that's kind of a good thing. I like that contrast between the light and the dark. And then don't forget you're going to be doing a wash on top of that. So, you know, the wash is going to bring out details and it is also going to uh, darken the colors. Uh, going under the coat, you know, I don't know that I'm sure that I did that on that one. So I can hold that limb, lip of that lid and really get in there. Now let me take a little quick look. Take him, turn, turn him around. I think I got everything. Let's get this other guy because I don't. Oh, he had a different style coat. I didn't have to really go up and under the coat that much. All right, so we're good. I'm gonna do one. <coughs> excuse me. I'm gonna do one more for you guys. 
and then I'm going to bang out all the rest of these without the camera right in front of me on a boom that I'm easily banging with my head. Um, something I'm going to experiment with as we move forward. I'm looking to get a new Canon camcorder that has a wide angle lens. You see, I can get up in those nooks and crannies and pull down. Pushing up, pushing up, and then down. Pushing up, using your brush to kind of shove that paint up into the details and in the nooks and crannies, and then pushing it down. And then just, but you can see the quality of these brushes for the cost is amazing. Everyone's got those expensive Windsor brushes and this and that. Well, these <coughs> Army Painter brushes are amazing. Now, I also use the brush cleaner. Every session I clean my brushes with the brush cleaner. I make sure all the dry paint or any bits of paint are out of the brush. Which is going to make your brush last longer, number one. And then the brush cleaner has a conditioner in it that helps the bristles of the brush stay flexible and pliable like you can see I can just kind of bend them and flow this Sorry, I keep bumping the camera guys and do the best I can here it's going to be an open experimentation I'm going to try to experiment with camera angles and stuff here with this new boom I'm going to do less uh, studio updates more how to's more tips uh, those are the videos that seem to be getting the most views. I don't think the studio updates are getting more than 60 or 70 views. It's kind of a waste of time. So I'm going to try to be putting up the uh, next diorama build. If it isn't already up, you definitely want to check that out. And then after that diorama build, we're going to be doing a German 88 with complete with a transport. The uh, eight ton um, half track. I think it's just going to be a matter of me getting used to this camera being here. It's not right in front of my face, it's just right above it, looking down so that I can still get the mini close enough for me to paint like I normally do and <coughs> not be right in front of my face. Excuse me. Alright, so that's three. I'm going to go ahead and polish off these, the rest of these great coats in the khaki. Then we're going to come back in. I'm going to hit all of the, the pants on these khaki uh, troops with like a dark gray. Um, I've already used a light gray. I've used, let's see, I've got these, these guys. I kind of did. I'm going to come back in with probably a little darker brown dry brush over those because I kind of wanted those to look like almost like they're leather. Almost like a worn leather. But I've already hit this guy with a wash just to kind of experiment with this color. This is a uh, Vallejo light brown. And I kind of like the color. I kind of wanted to add a few little bit more pop to the to the units. You know, kind of add a little bit more interest. So uh, I kind of went with that. I did, I don't know, four four like that just to, um, you know, like I said, add a little bit more interest. Uh, these I did with the the uh, Prussian blue pants with a medium gray uh, great coat <clears throat> so it could represent you know different units from around France alright guys we'll be back and I'll show you uh, kind of the, t the technique I'm using for doing the pants and uh, we'll just do a step by step as I finish these out uh, especially for you guys just getting into this this is 32 uh, French this is uh, the last of the French that I have out of the Waterloo uh, Warlord Games Waterloo box and I'm just power painting them. I mean it's really goes smooth if you keep your paint nice and smooth like that so it's not thick and you see how fast I can just sit here and just crank these out I did all these miniatures I've already got I don't know most of them done except for this khaki I did that just since yesterday so and that's just piddling around. I really wasn't going at it full bore because I'm also working on a tank kit over here to my left. So, uh, yeah, we'll be back. I'll show you some more steps to this.